So first of all, what is technology? Technology can mean a lot of different things. So today, when we think about technology, you guys may think about, you know, gadgets, uh, coding and building machines and stuff like that. But if you go back a few hundred years, maybe a thousand years, a hammer is a technology as well. If you don't have a hammer, you have a certain level of production, then you get a hammer and your production improves. So that's a technology as well. So the way we like to define technology in economics is that it's a mean of production or a method of production or a way of producing something. Anything that helps us in the production process is a technology. So as I said, uh, a hammer is a technology. If we go back thousands of years, a rock was a technology. You take a rock and you hit it on something else and you make something, that's technology. You use a stick to poke a hole in the ground. Well, that's a technology. And of course, today we have a lot of high-tech gadgets. So what we are going to do, we are going to introduce a production technology which is given by this. Y is a function of capital. So Y is output. A is capital. And N is population. And for simplicity's sake, we're going to assume everyone is working. We're not focused with unemployment right now. We'll focus on that later on in a later chapter. In this chapter, we're just going to assume that we have a fixed level of population in the country and everyone works. So, what does this tell us? Oh, and uh, F is of course technology. So notice that I have not written down F, what F is. All I'm saying is that our output, Y, depends on how much capital we have and how many people we have working in the country. Now, capital can be a lot of things. It can be machines, it can be offices and buildings and cars. These are all capitals. So effectively, in this very simplified model, what we're saying is that Given the number of people that we have and how much machinery and other uh, equipments and technology uh, instruments they have to work with, we can figure out, we can calculate how much our output should be. Now, this can be in the form, suppose, uh, how do I write this down? So suppose there are this, let me write this better. So this can be a production technology. Or this can be a production technology. K to the power alpha, N to the power beta, where alpha and beta are two variables. Or even this can be a production technology, K plus N. At this stage, we're not going to really focus on what that is, and we will just focus that output in the economy depends on two things, K and N. And when we say depends on, that's when we're talking about technology. So for example, we know that if N goes up, Y is going to go up, but by how much? And at what rate? That is where, uh, what do you call it? That is where technology comes into the consideration. So we're going to look at, at this stage, we're going to look at two types of technology. Uh, let's start with constant return to scale. What this means is that if we double the capital and the workers we have in the economy, the output is going to double. 
So what we can write is that if we have twice the capital and twice the workers, we're also going to have twice the output. This is a constant temperature. Or we can write just x, y equals to function of x, k, x, n. So by whatever amount or whatever scale we increase capital and population by, is the same level that our, uh, our output is going to increase. And the next thing we're going to look at is increasing return to scale. Increasing return to scale is, uh, how do I write this? Okay. So suppose y equals to function xk, xn, where y is less than x. So what this means is that if we double capital and output in the equation, Oh, sorry, capital and population in the economy. Output will obviously increase, but it will not exactly double. Maybe it will increase 70% or 80%. It will not increase by 100%. So, uh, in this case, our input is increasing by, let's say, X percent by x but our output is increasing by y and we have already said y is less than x so the question is which is more realistic uh, is constant return to scale more realistic or decreasing return to scale more realistic uh, and to do that we need to modify and to figure out which is more realistic we need to modify this equation a little bit so that's what we are going to do now. 